And after graduation, I worked at a small local tourism newspaper. And one of my assignments was to fly to Maui to do a story on the then uh, new Wailea Resort. And I was met by the PR director who took me on this flight scene tour, helicopter flight scene tour of the property and of the entire island of Maui. And it was quite an experience. I think that was my first time on a helicopter. Uh, and actually, the resort had two helicopters for this purpose. And I remember thinking to myself, what a fabulous resort. I wish I had her job. Now, a year later, that very same job was offered to me. And I almost didn't take it because I didn't want to move uh, to Maui and get stuck there because I really wanted to move to New York. But I thought about it and I decided to take the job at, um, at Wailea as PR director. Um, I didn't even know what PR was, but I figured, well, I get press releases from those people. I can write those press releases. Oh yeah, I can do that PR job. I, it was ridiculous, reductive thinking, but you know, that's how I got into PR. And I took the job and I swore to myself that I would only stay for two years uh, and then move to New York uh, because that had been my lifelong dream to, you know, leave Hawaii and uh, live in New York City. So exactly two years later, I quit my job at the Wailea Resort and moved to New York City without a job or an apartment or any friends and hardly any money. And I targeted travel PR firms with hotel and resort clients. I figured they would be the most likely PR agencies to hire someone who just came from Hawaii and who had recent experience uh, representing one of you know, the best resorts in the world. So six weeks later, which was a target I set to uh, start at my first job in New York, I started my first PR agency job um, working on um, the agency's newest client, which was the Berkshire Place Hotel. The hotel and later its parent company, Omni Hotels, uh, which our agency and I represented, um, uh, was a client for, for 10 plus years. So it was a nice long relationship and a always have a, you know, uh, a great affection for, for Omni Hotels and the Berkshire Place Hotel because of that. Well, the good of entrepreneurship is that you can create the business that you believe in. I co-founded an agency built on the business purpose of creating great work, a great workplace, and great communities that work. And by the latter, I meant healthy, sustainable communities within and beyond our, our workplace. And in fact, this business purpose to create great work, a great workplace, and great communities that work really helped to focus and drive uh, my partners and myself to create exactly that agency. So within eight years of starting PT and Company, we were recognized as the number one most creative PR agency and the number two best workplace among all PR agencies nationwide. And this is the power of purpose to really focus and drive us to accomplish what we say matters most. And the bad of entrepreneurship is that the responsibility for building the business and for covering payroll falls on you. And the hardest thing is to terminate employees because if your business takes a downturn, like many businesses have during COVID, so many agencies have had to cut staff 10, 15, 20, 40%. Uh, you know, I'm really glad that I'm not running an agency, you know, at this time. Because as I said, the hardest thing is to terminate employees. I actually started my first agency when 
I found out that we were losing our biggest client and that, you know, our client came to us one day and said, we love you guys, but we're going to have to terminate our relationship with you because our senior management thinks there is going to be a recession in the country. And as a prophylactic measure, they've asked us to cut all um, expenses across the board. And so we've decided that we have to um, cut our relationship with you. So I knew that if I told my boss that we were losing our biggest client, he would make me terminate three people I had working on that account full time. So I didn't tell him. I figured that we had a 90 day termination clause on that contract and I had a little time to figure out a solution to this. But, but at the end of the day, the only solution I could come up with was that I was gonna have to spin off our subsidiary set it up as an independent PR agency where I was the CEO and I could elect not to, to terminate my three colleagues. And that's what I did. 12 of my colleagues followed me in a management buyback and we spun off and set up PT and company as an employee owned agency owned by the 13 of us involved in the buyback. downturns in the economy, which necessitated that we cut staff costs. That's always, you know, the, for me, the biggest challenge as a, as a business owner. As I said, I co-founded uh, my first agency, um, and it was actually in July of 1990. And what my partners and I did not know at the time was that July 1990 was actually the start of the recession of 1991. So within six months, we lost half of our, of our billings, half of our revenues. Now, when a company or an agency loses half of its revenues, you have to cut staff costs accordingly. But because we were an employee owned agency, that was gonna be almost impossible to do. So I figured the best thing uh, to do was that the 13 of us all take a, a, a deep pay cut that equaled a 50% reduction in staff costs so we didn't have to terminate anyone. And, and that's what we did. That's what you do if you're, you know, an owner of a business. And that's what my, my 12 um, partners and I decided we would do. Other challenges of uh, of a startup um, was for us, it was living up to our own stated business purpose, which I mentioned was to create great work, a great workplace and great communities that were, i.e. healthy, sustainable communities. So when you position yourself in that way, you really have to walk the talk. It can't just be words on an ad or on your website or you know on your on your um, your capabilities deck so this necessitated us actually resigning two of our biggest clients at different times because they were we just we realized they were toxic to our agency and it wasn't just a matter of you know reassigning that client to a different account team because, you know, they were going to be toxic to, to the new account team. So we actually had to resign those, those two accounts to be able to, to live up to our own stated uh, purpose to create a, a great workplace. We also had to walk away from certain types of clients that were antithetical to creating uh, great communities that work or healthy, sustainable communities. For example, we turned down four different tobacco manufacturers over the history of our agency because there is no way that we could actually take on a tap tobacco client and say that we were committed to creating great communities that work. We also had to resign at one time a client that took an anti-gay position. We didn't know this when we first took them on, but this emerged later into in our relationship 
And we realized that if we didn't resign this client, then we would be complicit in supporting an indefensible position. So we had to resign that account. I, I, I'm talking as if we had to resign every piece of business that we that we ever uh, took on. I'm just talking specifically of the painful times that we had to take an action um, and you know the challenge of, of running a business, especially a purpose-driven business. Since our stated purpose was to create uh, a great workplace, we needed to operationalize that business purpose to create a great workplace. And, and so we were probably among the first, if not the first agency, PR agency in the country to adopt some of the policies and practices that we did um, in the early 1990s, like encouraging employees to bring their whole self to work and not check uh, at the door, their personalities and all of their uh, their quirks and foibles. We wanted people to bring their whole self to work and everything to the task of um, creativity and strategic thinking for the agency and for our clients. We even built out our office to honor the needs of the whole person. If we invite our employees to bring their whole selves to work, then we have to honor all of all of them. And so we had uh, a living room uh, so that to make the point that this office, you know, welcomes um, people to acknowledge their need just to kind of hang out and and uh, relax for a few minutes in our communal living room, which is in the middle of our, of our office. We also had an uh, eat-in uh, uh, kitchen and lunchroom, and we even had uh, a meditation room, which people didn't have to use it just to meditate. I didn't care if they used it to take a nap or to pray or to just have a time out or, or to meditate. You know, it was just to say that this was a sacred space that, you know, was available to you to use in whatever way you needed. We also um, wanted to make the transition from Sunday to Monday as easy and as effortless as possible, because I think we all know that sinking feeling in the pit of our stomachs when we are thinking that we have to go to work the next day. I didn't want people to dread having to come into work. So to make this transition as easy as possible, we you know, adopted casual dress every day, um, flexible start time so people could start whenever they wanted, whether it was at 7.30 in the morning or 9.30 in the morning. We allowed people to telecommute. We gave people kind of unlimited time off to tend to personal and, and family matters, knowing that they were gonna make it up to, as long as they get their work done. You know, we don't have to monitor every moment they're, they're in the office. We also gave people every other Friday off during the summer because, you know, summer is to enjoy. Um, and we also closed the office between Christmas and New Year's so that everyone could just, you know, have a nice break before we embarked on the madness of the new year. And in addition to um, paid, and it was fully paid, uh, medical and dental. We offer, also offered um, paid maternity um, leave. And I think we were probably the first agency to do this. And it was one month paid for every year that you worked at the agency. So if you worked three years at PTN Company, you got uh, up to three months paid maternity leave and you could tack on all of your vacation and um, bank of days. We actually didn't have sick days. We had a bank of days and we put all the days that each person had in terms of holidays, sick days, vacation, so they could use those days and not feel guilty in using it if they weren't sick. Um, and when we could afford it, we also uh, introduced a parental bonding leave 
for fathers who didn't need the medical part of the maternity benefits policy. So new fathers, um, whether they were adopting or had, you know, um, a child um, with their spouse could avail themselves of up to six weeks paid uh, parental bonding leave. So, you know, this is what we tried to do to create uh, a great workplace, one that would attract and retain the top talent that we needed to produce great work, which is also part of our business purpose. difficult <laughs> and especially when you're trying to merge two strong agency cultures uh, and I think that for about two years you'd often hear colleagues saying things like well that's not the way we did it at PT and company or that's not how we did it at CRT Tanaka um, and you know it, it takes about two years until uh, people stop saying that, and and when we start to create, you know, a new third culture that everybody is starting to own and embrace and to be part of it, and it's, you know, it's understandable that you know whenever you go through an, an acquisition and an integration, you know, people are very nervous and afraid because they don't know what their position is in this new world order. And until they settle in, there is a lot of, um, a ner a lot of nervousness and, and fear. And that's a part that is really, you know, you have to get through because you're dealing with, you know, people trying to settle in. And until everyone settles in and settles down, you know, it can be uh, challenging. I think purpose and passion are everything. And passion is what made me start my first agency simply because I didn't want to have to fire three dear colleagues who I loved working with, right? That would have made uh, the joy of working much less so. So I created this this whole big uh, scheme so as not to have to fire those, those three colleagues. I led my colleagues in a management buyback and spun off and set up PT and company as an independent agency that was wholly owned by the 13 of us. And as CEO, I could elect and I did choose to elect not to fire those three colleagues. So that was all about passion. You know, passion drives us to do what is important and essential for us to do in order to, you know, to live and survive and to thrive. And purpose is what made us build an agency that stood for great work, a great workplace, and great communities that work. So passion and purpose for me are the two key P words. <laughs> if your dream is to own your own business and that's all you ever wanted to do, by all means, you should pursue your passion and do that. I, that was not the case for me. I always tell people that I was an accidental entrepreneur. The only reason I became an entrepreneur was because it was the only solution I could come up with to avoid having to terminate three dear colleagues. So, you know, but by all means, if you feel that you're an entrepreneur at heart, you should go with that. But, you know, there are considerations, right? When you're starting up a business because it's not easy to be an entrepreneur. And I think probably the most difficult part is to be responsible and accept responsibility for the livelihoods of other people that you work with. I mean, you know, I used to lay awake at night, you know, worrying about, oh my God, what does this recession mean for us? Are we going to have to 
lay off people, uh, you know, that weighs heavily on you if you're, you know, if you're the entrepreneur and the founder of your business that you passionately wanted to start. I think two things, if I had to distill it down to two things. One was leading a group of colleagues in a management buyback to start an employee-owned PR agency and building that agency uh, through mergers and acquisitions to create the largest employee-owned PR agency in the country with 240 employee owners. And at the same time, one of the top 10 largest independent uh, firms in the country. So I'm very proud of that. I love the idea that of employee ownership because um, I, I know that everyone who works so hard at it, I think should have some, you know, ownership, some equity, some piece of the action. So I love that idea. And after uh, leaving PR, which I did in 2015, I started a new consultancy, which actually was a result of me looking back over my life and career and realizing that the two most important things I ever did for myself was to articulate the business purpose of my first agency, PT and Company, and I saw the power of purpose to to, to build that agency to be the agency that we envisioned, uh, an agency that was all about great work, a great workplace, and great communities that work. And then 12 years later, being forced by an executive coach to actually rethink my own life purpose. I don't even think that I knew my life purpose, but she said, rethink my life purpose. And I did, and what I came up with was my purpose in life is simply to choose joy in my life every day, to be mindful of that joy and to share that joy with others. And I've been living that purpose for the past 18 years since discovering and articulating it. Um, and I try to live that purpose every single day. And it's a reason that I actually started Joyful Planet um, five years ago when I left PR. Uh, and Joyful Planet is both my vision for the planet. If 7.7 7 billion people were living their purpose and leveraging their talents, their expertise, and their passion in service of other people, and our planet, we could together create a much more joyful planet. So Joyful Planet is my consultancy as well, where I'm focused on helping individuals and organizations discover and actively live or operationalize their purpose to unleash greater success, fulfillment, and joy not just in their personal lives, but in their workplaces and in their communities. So I'm very proud of um, my con starting this consultancy, Joyful Planet, after I left a 35 plus year PR career, which I loved totally. And frankly, I am totally loving Joyful Planet and the work that I'm doing with individuals and, and organizations. So. I think these are the two things uh, that I'm proudest of to date. Thanks for asking. <laughs>